Hello and welcome to another Out of Spec Reviews video. Welcome here to beautiful Ghent, Belgium, and welcome to the new Volvo C40. This is Volvo's first fully electric model, which means you will never see a combustion or hybrid version of the C40. It's battery electric only. And in this video, we're gonna take it for a drive, but of course, I'm gonna take you on a quick tour to start us off. This is the new Volvo C40. It's built on the CMA platform, which is largely similar to XC40 and Polestar 2. But of course, with different suspension tuning, styling, and things like this, this particular one is the dual motor all wheel drive. It's the only variant we'll be getting in the US. Uh, 300 kilowatts of power. What's that, about 405, 407 horsepower, something like this. Similar to the Polestar 2 we've reviewed on this channel, 150 kilowatt, so what am I saying? 150 kilowatt rear motor, 150 kilowatt front motor. Uh, this particular one is more of a styling exercise over XC40, largely similar chassis, everything underneath. It just is now sloping down in the back. What do you guys think? I just asked you on Twitter what everyone thought, and it's like everyone loves the styling of this thing. So that's pretty cool, a universally liked styled car. I mean, personally, I think XC40 is a little bit better for me because the roof comes back and then squares off, and that's better for me and the dogs. Plus, you guys know I'm not a huge fan of these coupified SUVs. I just think you're not really gaining anything. Here, you gain about 4% better aerodynamics over the normal XC40 recharge and maybe some neat styling details. For example, take a look at these right here. They're not real, it's just cut off, but that looks really nice. You get this neat taillight design. It does a cool startup animation as well. Keep an eye on inside EVs. I'll try and get in our full review a little bit more details here. And overall, the car looks good. So to run you through some more specs, it has a 78 kilowatt hour battery pack in the middle here, 75 kilowatt hour usable. It has a charging port here, of course, in the back driver's side. Every car puts a charging port on a different side. Here it's in the back driver's side. And this one's a Euro spec car. Again, being in Belgium, this would be uh, J1772 in the US. And then of course you have your DC pins. I believe 11 kilowatt or maybe 12 kilowatt, 48 amp onboard charger, pretty spicy uh, is my understanding in the US. And then 150 kilowatt peak DC fast charging. You can take a look at our Polestar 2 DC fast charging test to get an idea of how this car will fast charge and it wasn't incredible it did 150 kilowatts as advertised but i think only from about zero to eight percent state of charge however the volvo guys said that they've optimized that the uh the battery preconditioning on the way to a dc fast charger so this should improve and as soon as we get this car in the u.s of course we'll be running it through our series of range testing charging testing things like this the c40 again based on essentially the same chassis as xc40 means it looks pretty much the same so you get this interesting front end cut off design here. I think it's quite a stylish vehicle. I really like the way this looks, especially in this fjord blue. The blue color is designed to mimic the color of the water in the fjords of Sweden. I really like this. I'll show you around the inside some really neat touches too. And that's what Volvo does so well is they make a premium product feel special, but not pretentious. You don't feel bad about driving this car around. It's really such a nice vehicle. So let's run through the inside. I'm going to show you the trunk space in a second. Should we see what's under the hood as well? Let's take a look as to what's under here. I'll give you a quick glimpse of the inside before we go. Yes, blue carpets. I absolutely love this. I think it's so cool. Of course, you don't have to spec it this way, but I think it's just so neat. And by the way, everything in here is made from recycled, I think, PET bottles, essentially, and then no animal uh, inside. So it's a totally animal free interior across the model range. And I believe the same is also for XC40 recharge. Fun trick about opening any Volvo hood is you just follow the path here to find the hood latch release. So we're going to follow the little sign. And then right here is where the hood latch should be in theory. Nope. <laughs> it's farther away on this particular one. That's the first Volvo I've seen where it's over here and not at the top there. Um, so the Volvo trick of old doesn't necessarily work. Huge sea of plastic. And then of course you get a little underfloor storage, a little bit of a frunk for your charging cables and accessories. Definitely prefer that. I like it. 
Again, I'm fine with EVs not having a frunk if they can optimize space, but when they're able to give you a little bit, oh, totally. And that's plenty, plenty, plenty of room for some charging cables. Of course, you have your only maintenance item here as your washer fluid closing the hood. There we go. Nice, solid thunk. You can tell that thing is put together like a bank vault. Pretty impressive. I really like this color. And, and I'm, I'm honestly growing on the coupified SUV thing. I think there's the only coupified SUV I really like on the market is the Cayenne Coupe. I think it works really well. But this is growing on me, and I think it looks way better in person than maybe I thought from the photos. This is a really neat angle, and this little spoiler is cool too. I mean, this is looking nice, I have to say. Power trunk opening up here. Let's take a look. Of course, you can take this thing out, and the dog still would probably fit in here pretty well. A little bit of side pocket storage on this side, and then a little bit of a mandatory first aid kit. Euro spec. You have some... I don't know, luggage stuff here. Wow, pretty deep underfloor storage, have to say. Not deep, I meant expansive. That's pretty awesome. So plenty of room for stuff. Gotta love that. Before we go inside, let me run you through the pricing and range and things like this. This car starts at about $58,000 US, and that's before the $7,500 federal tax credit. I don't know if it's been rated by the EPA yet, but if the XC40 recharges anything to go by, we're looking in that low 200 mile range. And well, that's a little bit low on paper. However, I think with pretty good charging curve being updated to the car, again, we'll have to test this when it comes to the US. And also for most people home charging, as long as you can get 200, 220 miles real world out of it, that should be fine for most driving usage. Of course, we'll test a lot more of this when we get back to the US and see how far it actually goes in our 70 mile per hour highway range test. Let's start here with the back seat. So first off, thunk test. Oh, really solid. This thing is just built so well and I absolutely love these little cubbies everywhere. Really good use of space. That's pretty awesome. And whoa, I have the seat set for myself here and plenty of room, more than I was expecting, of course. Rear heated seats. You have your USB ports under here, USB-C. Rear air vents. This kind of is ticking all the boxes for a small SUV. Beautiful glass roof as well. No shade in this particular car, but I think that is okay. I don't think that's a huge issue. All of this is animal free. Really like these uh, sort of R design seats, if you will. Steering wheel's cool too. I mean, everything's nice. I really like this non piano black trim right there. That's neat. Let's take a look at the headroom back here. And back here, there's actually pretty good headroom considering this is the slopey back one. Um, my head's definitely touching but it's kind of scalloped. I don't know if you can see out a little bit. So yeah, pretty good room. I, just the top of my hair is brushing, but if I kind of scrouch down a little bit, I have the leg room to do it. I fit just fine, gotta say, that's really nice. Uh, I was expecting worse. Wow, this is looking good. Let me show you some cool details around the front before I show you some of the infotainment and things like this. Now, interestingly, there's still a hump back here. Why? I don't know, because there's no drivetrain connecting the two motors. So not sure, it could have something to do with the battery pack, and I don't know. Um, yeah, look at this interior. This is a gorgeous thing. Now the screen itself isn't huge. It's a nice size. You can see it's already fingerprinty, but it's so bright you actually don't notice it when the screen is on. And overall, I think this blue with the black interior combo, this is nice. This is how I would do it. And I really like these patterns here in the dashboard and here on the side as well. These are designed when the ambient lighting kicks on to give you this really texturized look that's supposed to be reminiscent of some national park in Sweden. And honestly, I love those little details. I love that they took the time to create a color combination with the mountains in the national park in Sweden to sort of represent this car's heritage and where it's uh, you know designed and engineered. So love the uh, air vents. By the way, we're in the town where this car was made in Ghent, Belgium. And then this is the new shifter. Take a look at this. It's got a hole through it. <laughs> That's pretty interesting, have to say. What do you say we jump up front, go through some of the infotainment, and then without further ado, let's get it out on the road. When you jump inside the C40, there's no way to actually turn it on. You can see the start button's been removed. This is just a leftover piece from XC40, but honestly, that just feels like a little bit of a cheap way to get around not having a start button, I think. I would much rather see, you know, for a brand new model, 
let's make the dashboard look good. So battery percentage is up at 58% state of charge. Foot on the brake doesn't turn it on, but by putting it into gear, that's when the vehicle wakes up and comes into life. Pretty good approach, same as Polestar from what we've seen. I'll put it back in park. And then you get here the infotainment system, which is honestly really uh, good. It's the Google system, but it's a little bit different adaptation from what we've seen from Polestar. So you have, of course, different user profiles that you can have. You have all of your apps right here, which is really great. So you have built-in Spotify, which I love, a whole bunch of other stuff. You have your range assistant, so you can see your estimated range, you know, if you drive smoothly or if you drive aggressively and then you can of course have a range optimizer to help you get the most amount of range out because interestingly here in the dashboard you'll see when we're driving it doesn't actually give you a range calculation just percentage i thought this was quite interesting uh, but coming in here you have really good route planning so let's just say we go i want to say really good but let's see if it can do it actually i've never tried it in europe so let's say we want to go to munich germany <laughs> it gave me a little thing on the end that's funny so let's say we want to go there it's loading the route we'll do this real time we'll say charging stop needed to reach destination okay add charging stops okay look at this it's done it it said 25 minutes 25 minutes 15 minutes 15 minutes and then a deep charge here and then we're at munich at 21 percent. that's really awesome and it happened really quick so that's important in an EV to have really good route planning. I have to say that's probably the best non-Tesla route planning I've seen. Heated seats, heated steering wheel, full 360 degree view camera right here. The rear camera is a little bit interesting. You can see a little bit of a fisheye and you'll see, you'll mention, or I will mention when I'm driving, sorry for the camera gear in the way here, but you can see the view out the back isn't amazing. So that's something to keep in mind on this car versus XC40 recharge. And uh, yeah, so you also have a ton of other settings here for your driving stuff. Um, there's an off-road mode instead of like a traction control off setting or a, a, what Volvo typically does is they'll go ESP Sport. So that's quite interesting. You also have two different steering wheel firmness settings. I like it in the light setting. And then you have one pedal driving on or off. You no longer have the B functionality here on the shifter. It's just one pedal every time you get in, which is great. And if you turn that off, it coasts and then blends in. We'll try that out when we drive it, of course. I'm giving you a little bit of a sneak preview of the video because I'm shooting the intro after my first drive. So you got to get in and let's go. Two USB ports here, cigarette lighter, or I should say just a 12 volt outlet. I don't really think many people smoke much anymore. Wireless charger right here. It does get quite hot, quite hot though, I have to say and then like a little change cubby, not quite sure. One of my favorite features of this car is this, it's a trash can. If you have junk, you just put it in there, and then when you're done, you lift up your thing, this just pops out, you throw it in the trash, then you put it back in. I love that, because I always have like Starbucks stuff hanging around in my door pockets everywhere. You know when I get my straws and things that you guys get mad at me about for not using reusable things, but it just, doesn't work at my local Starbucks. I have to get new plastic. I can just put the straws and stuff in there, which is really nice. So there we go. Harman Kardon sound system, really nice glass roof. Let's go drive this thing. It's gonna be a long video. It's gonna be a, my first impressions of driving this car, but I have to say the positioning's great. The feeling is great. The car is a very pleasant vehicle. It's, it is a good looking car. And I honestly don't mind the Coupified thing here on the C40. I still think XC40 is the way to go, personally, but if you're a little bit more style conscious and you don't have massive dogs to haul around, this might just be for you. By the way, the lights aren't flickering in real life. Oh, one thing about the headlights is these are a new pixel LED technology. They should be really bright and really accurate for uh, the you know so-called matrix LED functions that are available here in Europe. We will get the same hardware in the US. We just won't have the cool light functionality where it will keep the car oncoming dark and the rest high beams. We still will have auto high beams, but they'll just be on and off. So there's a quick tour of the car. We'll have to get exact final pricing and EPA later on. Uh, I actually don't have the numbers now. I just kind of Googled it <laughs> and, and I think it may not be totally accurate, but I want to get the video up for you guys. I'll definitely correct any misinformation going. This is literally the first drive here in Belgium. You can see some other journalists having their cars there. And yeah, just wanted to get this up, get my first impressions to you as soon as possible. So let's jump in and go for a drive of the Volvo C40 P8 all-wheel drive.
You join me inside the C40 now. I genuinely haven't even driven it yet. And I have to say, uh, feels the same as XC40 in here. Maybe a little bit lower, um, but seating position's great. The seats are great. I really love this interior, genuinely. At night, you can see these like mountain-inspired graphics things in the doors. Like the Everything's really well thought out. It's a very holistic package. Um, we're going to take this on about a two-hour drive. I'll break it up into sections throughout the video, but this will be genuinely my first drive experience. New shifter here that you can kind of put your fingers through, which is pretty neat, into drive. That turns the car on. Everything comes to life as soon as you put it in drive. That works well. Oh, the new steering wheel buttons are lovely. They're not uh, piano black. They're sort of this matte plastic touch, which I actually prefer. Um, it's chilly out, 13 degrees Celsius. I'm in Belgium. I can put on the heated steering wheel, but no need. I'm in drive. I have it in one pedal driving and I have the heavy steering off. So let's head out here. It's literally one of the first people to drive the C40. Very exciting, of course. And then I guess we'll head out over this way and uh, we'll go here. This is kind of neat. We have a man from Volvo saying something. I'm not sure. There we go. Things are opening. Gates are coming open. Look at this. Oh, neato. And off we go in the X or the C40 recharge, excuse me. Um, wow, this is lovely. So I haven't spent much time with XC40 recharge, but I have spent a lot of time in Polestar 2, which is the sister car. So uh, this CMA platform is XC40 recharge, Polestar 2, and now C40 recharge. And have to say the C40 recharge seems pretty neat. Now, personally, um, I don't like the slopey back thing because my dogs won't fit, but colleagues of mine, for example, Mike, who I don't know if you know him from this channel, um, but he loves the C40. He said, this is the way to go. So exit VIP. I think that's us. So let's go there and see what we have to do. Do we need to present a card of some kind? Use your ticket if barrier doesn't open automatically. It did open automatically. <laughs> nice. Mini Cooper SE up in front. Lovely. Let's head out here. And wow, instantly such a different character than Polestar 2. Seriously, night and day difference. Um, first off, the instrument clusters are lovely. Uh, I've turned off the Google Nav uh, spokesperson. Interestingly, we're going past a sign for the new iX3, the BMW. So really a big EV push here in Europe, more so than the US, I think. I've spent a lot of time in Europe recently, as you guys know, and I think it's pretty interesting um, how really passionate Europeans are about electric cars. So have to say, just taking it out of the parking garage, the steering is so nice and light, which I love. It really gives you this Volvo character, the suspension tuning, oh, is so comfortable. Oh, wow, this is totally different than Polestar 2. I was kind of coming in expecting it to be like a Polestar 2 situation, and it's really not. The infotainment is XC40 Recharge. It's a little different, of course, and gotta say the Google Nav system here is working great. The uh, system, I should say, not just the Nav, but the entire Google operating system is lovely one pedal drive even at 98 percent state of charge is doing a ton of regen and i think that is down to uh friction brake blending there's no way that the battery pack is accepting this much it's cold battery yeah so definitely not there but is the the tuning the calibration good let's try it i need to go over some lines I'm not paying attention this way power yeah pretty quick no question there braking feels nice throttle pedal feels so much better than than the last version of this car that I drove on this chassis so instantly we're looking good we're gonna get into some traffic here I made a wrong turn of course somehow and I'll catch up with you in a little bit and we'll do some more nerdy testing we'll try some slow speed stuff some high speed stuff and then of course some cornering you join me in more of a city environment now and instantly the car sizing just feels so nice really like this size of car and i'm impressed with the noise level it's very quiet the motors are really quiet everything's very serene uh, a couple like 
noticing points for me. Steering wheel doesn't come towards me enough. One pedal driving calibration seemed nice. Let's just inch it forwards really quick. So tipping in. I have to give it a lot of throttle for the car to move forwards, which is odd. So you tip in, the car moves, I'm adding throttle, adding throttle's not doing anything. Then you get to a point that's like ramps up. So pretty long throttle pedal, which doesn't bother me. I don't mind that so much. You just need to get used to this. And it's really soft when it comes to a stop. The calibration's lovely um, because a lot of cars like a Model 3, uh, not Model 3, I'm sorry, Mustang Mach-E will come to a stop and then like mm, grab the brakes a little bit. I know this is a bus lane, but I just want to try stopping here really quick. No, there's no buses around on a hill. Ooh, that is a smooth stop. I want to try it on a downhill too, but that's pretty impressive, the calibration there. And the power <laughs> is good. I will say rear visibility with this sloping back is, is noticeably bad. <laughs> no way around it, it's not great. Um, but I can click this little camera button and I get 360 degree view and now I have a camera out the back. Volvo's cameras are always a bit fisheye. They're a little weird and I don't know at what speed this will go away, but we'll try it. I don't think you can do the Tesla thing having the camera up. Wow, one pedal driving is so smooth and then tipping in, very smooth for takeoff. Now that's nice, rear camera's already gone away. Very impressive low speed powertrain calibration. This is seriously dead quiet in here. This is the dual motor version. We're only getting this version in the US. So uh, 300 kilowatts, what's that? 400 horsepower or so, um, like 405, 407, something like this. And uh, identical motors, 150 kilowatts each which means coming in and out of corners, at least in the other cars I've driven, it's very balanced, very neutral. This is not a performance car. It's not meant to be. It only has a top speed of 112 miles an hour like every new Volvo. As you guys know, Volvo is a very safety-centric brand, and um, that there's no exception here for, for the C40. The, uh, you know, the, the maximum speed across the entire model range is uh, yeah, 112 miles an hour, which even for the Polestars, I think, which I don't really agree with, but look, I get they're trying to be safe about everything, but that doesn't seem fun. Um, wow, this thing is quiet and comfortable and is really cool. So let's talk uh, color trim options, these things while we're just cruising around the city, and then I'll tell you a little bit more about the interior. So you get in this particular spec, which are all of the cars here today are in the launch specification, which is Fjord Blue on the outside, inspired by the way, by uh, the Fjords coming into uh, Sweden, which I was just recently at with Alyssa on an out of spec motoring road trip video that may or may not have been posted by the time this video goes live. And it's an amazing color, really beautiful color, love it. But even more interestingly is the uh, bits of Fjord Blue I showed you in the intro on the inside. This is all recycled PET bottles, I believe, all of this carpeting. It feels really nice. It's kind of a deeper pile than I was expecting. And yeah, really love the interior here. So the C40 is sort of this mix between a sedan and an SUV. It's got the uh, seating height position of an SUV. I really feel like that guy was in an Audi Q3. I feel like I was almost higher than he was. Um, but overall, I think from the outside, it doesn't appear to be this big cumbersome thing. It's pretty understated for the size. And it's pretty sporty looking uh, with this sloping back. Now you guys know I'm not a fan of the coupified SUV stuff, but I will say I think the C40 is maybe the better take of them because it truly is a different model line, a different car for Volvo, and they're not treating it as like the XC40 coupe. Uh, this and the XC40 Recharge share pretty much the same underpinnings, but C40 is branched off as another model. And interestingly, Volvo claims they will not put any combustion or hybrid powertrain in this model. It's the first fully electric Volvo ever, um, and it uses this battery pack against 75 kilowatt hour usable, like I mentioned in the beginning. And is that the right approach? I think so. I think, uh, you know, by 2030, Volvo's committed to being fully electric, which is not that far away. I don't know if they're going to be able to do it. I don't know how the infrastructure is going to support all this stuff. It's going to be so interesting to watch all of these claims from automakers actually play out. Um, I will say, I, I don't know. I, I think they're taking the right approach, but right now they only have two battery electric models and we are eight, nine years away, eight years away. That's like one life cycle of a product to revamp their entire product line. I don't know, in the car world, that's really fast. 
I wish them the best of luck though. I will say this car is driving so much better than I expected. I also have adaptive cruise control with pilot assist. So now the car is accelerating, braking and steering with the touch of a button for me. Uh, driver monitoring is done by way of a torque sensor in the steering wheel, really smooth. I'm gonna put it to the closest distance here. I'll set the speed to 50 kilometers per hour once we get moving, I guess. And yeah, so restarting does automatically then 50 kilometers per hour. Interestingly, when you touch the steering wheel buttons here, it increases and decreases by five kilometers per hour. In the US, it will do it by five miles per hour. But if you push and hold, it does it by one. And I actually like this because I think most people end up going to uh, set their speeds in five miles per hour increments, especially in the US, you go 55, 60, 65, 70. And here it's just one click to go back up and back similar to every other Volvo. And then you push and hold the dial in the exact speed. Love that. Also, interestingly, I wonder if this will make it to the US, is there's no range calculation here on the screen. It shows 97% state of charge. That's how I like to view a car. But for an average consumer, is that good? Do, you, do they wanna know the range? I think there's a way to show the range. If I click the home button and I go to car status, uh, there's, I saw somewhere that you can have it pull up the range here. Um, range assistant, there we go. So 400 kilometers of range predicted right now. And if I click home, yes, now I have it dialed up to show my estimated range on the home screen. But interestingly, it doesn't show uh, range here on the instrument cluster. And I'm, I wonder what their strategy is for this. I kind of like to know both. The guessometer range certainly um, look, there's there's two different ways to calculate range in an electric car. The first is a rated range calculation. And with a rated range calculation, you basically show EPA range, which would be, I don't know what this car will come in at. I don't know if it's been rated by the EPA yet, but if it has, I'll put the number here, uh, but I haven't received that information yet. And um, basically it would show that calculation. Let's just assume it's EPA range rated at 240, 250 miles. I think it's 4% more uh, aerodynamic than XC40 recharge, but that doesn't mean it will go 4% farther. There's other factors too, we'll see. Um, so whatever it is, 240 miles is my guess, uh, just, just out of the blue guess, uh, let's use that. It would just basically ramp down off that 240 miles based off of how much usable energy you have. So it's always like at 68%, it would always show the same range remaining. And then really the only difference would be battery aging and degradation would go down. This is Tesla's approach. It's also Lucid's approach, I believe. And uh, this is one way to provide a, a use, a, you know, basically a set calculation that as a user, I know if I drive faster, I'll go through that range more. If I drive slower, I know I can maybe even beat that range. Uh, the guessometer approach, which is how most automakers take, say, let's take the last 16, 30, 40 miles of driving, whatever their calculation is, and say, based off of that average consumption, I'm gonna predict your future. And that's difficult because if you're driving in the city constantly and then you take a motorway trip, you're like, oh my God, I'm losing range so fast. And it's not that you're losing range, it's just your consumption's different and it was basing it off of your city driving like we are here. So these are the two ways to do it. I don't know which is best. I, I, I would love to know what you guys think, but I will say Volvo is taking the approach of not even showing a range on the screen, just showing you battery percentage. And then you can pull up your estimated range inside the user uh, interface here. Now this car fully supports over the air updates. So it's possible that this will change over time. We'll see. But for now, I have to say driving it around the city, the car feels to be the right size. It's modern, has a young vibe to it, but also a little bit of a classy vibe. I mean, I, I love Volvos. There's no no hiding that. You guys know I'm a big fan. Uh, you know, and when a V90 wagon becomes electric, I'll be first in line for it. You guys know that. And I have to say, uh, wow, big bus coming at us. <laughs> Bendy bus. Hope it doesn't take the side of the car off. And you guys know, uh, you know, as soon as, as soon as I can get a, a Volvo wagon that's electric, that's sort of my, my ultimate car. I just think they're so cool. And here we are, of course, in their small SUV that I think is the right sort of image for someone. It's very understated. It's premium, but not pretentious. I say this about every Volvo model. 
and it's just quiet and comfortable. It's great. It doesn't really give you this sense of trying to be something it's not. It's very honest in its approach. And USB-C power outlets. Interior's great. I get a little trash can area here I can put down. A nice armrest, of course. And yeah, it just feels great. Interestingly, they put like the R design steering wheel on here, so it's a pretty thick steering wheel rim, but I would have actually preferred the thinner wheel, but that's okay. I think this is the young and sporty character they're trying to go after. Overall, I'm gonna try the sound system. We're gonna hit some twisty roads. We'll hit the highway and then we'll call it a review, a first drive experience. It's not really a review. If you're interested in my full thoughts, head to Inside EVs where I will be uh, sharing sort of a, a video tomorrow after I've spent time with the car. And um, this will be sort of my, my thoughts all in one. You guys get the first experience here on this channel now. Well, after spending some time inching this thing around the city, we are now on the motorway, heading out of Brussels and heading towards Ghent, which is where this car was made only a few days ago. Series production started, I think, six days ago from the time I'm uh, recording this video. This is probably a pre-production car, but I think it's brandy, brandy new. Um, yeah, you know, the, the thing with Volvos are, um, I, I really like them, I but they, they give you this vibe of just pleasantness and it's so nice to be inside that it makes your day better with this awesome glass roof. By the way, no shade for this glass roof. I know a lot of you will ask. Um, not sure how well that's gonna work in hot weather environments, but I had the Polestar in Colorado with bright sun and well, yeah, totally fine. I think uh, it's very typical Swedish design to have a lot of glass and I, I prefer this to be honest. And you know, the weather's always like this around here in Europe, uh, between here and, and Belgium, all the way up to the Nordic countries, it's just cloudy every day. So you gotta make the most of the light. And I think this car does a really good job of it. But yeah, it makes my day better. I just had some good tunes on, cruising around Belgium in the uh, C40. It's a nice, really nice car to, to cruise around in. But let's talk about highway driving. Let's talk um, uh, a few different things. I wanna get nerdy about the battery pack stuff later, maybe when we get uh, into more performance driving scenarios. But on the highway, um, this car is way more compliant than I was expecting. So, um, you know, again, just recently driving Polestar 2 Performance Pack, that car is unbelievably stiff, especially when you turn up the Olean's dampers. I would say this car is even more compliant than the non-Performance Pack Polestar, which I've also driven. And yeah, really nicely tuned from a, a, a suspension calibration standpoint. It's awesome on the highway. Big bumps, you still feel this like stiffness of the chassis type thing, like it kind of moves the whole car. Every Volvo kind of has this. It's not unique here to uh, C40. It's just the way they tune uh, their cars. But yeah, I'm sure it's very similar to XC40 Recharge on the highway. I just haven't spent time in that particular vehicle here. Um, yeah, we'll talk driver assistance. So this uses the newest generation of Pilot Assist. I think it's called Pilot Assist 2.0. Could be wrong, but essentially it's uh, lane centering with uh, adaptive cruise control and it's fantastic. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, it does require torque into the steering wheel. It makes these cute little buzzes and chimes and jingles when you need to touch the wheel and stuff. It works really well. And what I want to do is test what happens if I don't put my hands on the wheel. So how is it going to catch my attention? So I'm going to be monitoring the steering wheel like this. I'm going to be waiting for a warning. So I get my first warning. It says hold steering wheel. It says put hands on. No one's behind me. So if it slams on the brakes, we should be good. Now it's red hold steering wheel. I'm covering the accelerator pedal. Now that someone is behind us, let's see what it does. It's just chiming. Nice chime. Now it's pilot assist canceled, resume active driving, emergency stop assist is activated, and it's just progressively slowing down. Now it's hitting the brakes, and now it's like, hey dude, wake up, and now I'll take over. <laughs> Great system, by the way. I like it when a car uses more than just, um, uh, you know, sort of noises to get your attention. It really gets on the brakes, which is awesome. And then I can turn it back on. It's not like it locks me out. So then I can set it back up to 110 kilometers per hour. Coming into a little bit of traffic here. Uh, let's touch on the noise. We're on a really loud surface. We have a Volkswagen Crafter cutting in and the Volvo handled that wonderfully. It didn't slam on the brakes as soon as it came in. It just backed off enough. I was covering the brakes. That's a really, really smooth rent down right there. I like that quite a bit. Following distance on the closest, of course. 
Um, yeah, Pilot Assist, I've used in a ton of cars. It's awesome. When you make lane changes, it comes out of Pilot Assist. It doesn't do auto lane change, but then it snaps right back in. You don't need to turn anything else back on, which is really awesome. This car has front and rear fogs for the Euro spec version. Sometimes you get Volvos in the US that have the front and rear fog button, but don't actually have those functions. So I'd be curious if the US spec version uh, comes with fogs. It's, it's kind of hard to tell from a packaging standpoint what we're going to be getting. Like, I doubt we'll get the really cool Euro mirrors that have this uh, bending function. Of course, we won't get the cool functionality of the headlights, but we are getting the headlight units. Um, but yeah, I mentioned all of this in the intro. Let's talk uh, driving comfort on the highway so uh, for, for highway driving this car really nice it's not dead silent in here but it's you get the sense that you're in a really quality product like it is smooth it's relatively quiet there is a lot of glass but yeah more than acceptable quieter than most cars in this category and I'm just so impressed with the way it goes down the road now me personally I would prefer a lower uh, seating position in this in this uh, seat here but um, yeah, this is not the case for uh, most Volvo drivers, apparently. I think I need to exit this way towards Ghent. So everyone out of the way, cruising through. Ghent, that's us. And we made it over with relative ease. It's pretty nimble. It's got tons of torque, so you can just zig your way through traffic, which is awesome. And yeah, big power up top too. Really nice. Also, the brake pedal feels amazing. We'll talk more about that when we drive it in the twisties, but no question you could go on a long drive in this car. It just comes down to the charging curve. Uh, now, plugging in uh, with the Polestar 2, I recently did a 0 to 100% DC fast charging test, and it was not an impressive test. It did 150 kilowatts as advertised, but only from 0 to, I think, 9% or 10%, something like that, maybe even less, maybe 8%, but I know it was really low. And so that's quite concerning, of course, to see um, that type of curve. But I spoke to some of the battery engineers on this car just before briefly, and they said it's optimized uh, for now to do 150 kilowatts to about 35 or 40 percent. So uh, my recommendation for road trips would be to pull in low, charge it during peak rates to maybe 40, 50 percent, and then head to the next one. So when we get this car back in the U.S., we'll of course do charging testing, see how it's improved. They say they've worked a lot on on-route preconditioning for the battery pack, making sure it's at the right temperature, factoring in uh, the power level of the charger and also your current state of charge and temperature. It's more of a dynamic heat map algorithm that it's gonna go through rather uh, than even Tesla, for example, just as anytime it's plugged into a DC charger, it wants to be at X temp, which is not the most um, efficient way of warming up your cars. Interesting, we're following a Tesla Model 3 that has the amper side turn signals and he's full throttle, but yeah, we're right up. We were right with him that whole time. And um, interesting turn signal approach on that car. 120 kilometer per hour speed limit. We'll set it up to 125 or so. And now we'll just cruise along here. So for example, I've turn signal on, steering went off, adaptive cruise control still on, and now it's back to auto steering. I love that feature. Pilot assist is awesome. Sound system is really good too, by the way. I wouldn't say it's amazing. I would love to see the Bowers and Wilkins make their way to the 40 cluster cars. But of course, down the road, when we see the 60 and 90 cluster cars get uh, you know, electrified uh, for battery electric, that's when we'll probably get those nicer options. The Harman Kardon here is good for your, your normal average listener all the way to, I would say, your audio uh, dabbling in the enthusiast range. But it's not, you know, the Bowers and Wilkins, in my opinion, is one of the best systems ever put in a car. This is pretty good too. Yeah, just put on good tunes, cruise, and you will love the C40. It, it gives off such a great, great uh, vibe. I hate to use that word, but like it really is a great, uh, happy place to be, even on this cloudy day. And now you join me for a performance loop. I'm gonna try the steering feel firm setting. So this would be like putting steering to sport. Yeah, it does make a difference, but I think I kind of prefer the light steering. I just wanna turn one pedal driving off really quick. So there's no B mode. So when you come off the accelerator, it just coasts. When you hit the brake, it blends regen and then goes to friction. So let's see how this feels around a corner. It's pretty good blending, I have to say. The car does a really, the brake by wire system in this car is fantastic. Wow, that's awesome. Like it's a firm pedal. I said the same thing about the Polestar too, but I'm gonna put it back to one pedal drive. Changes the throttle mapping too. I think we're still in Ghent. 
uh, but we'll just see how the car kind of performs. Now the thing to keep in mind is this is not a performance vehicle like the Polestar is, but 400 plus horsepower, you would think it would handle well. There's no ESP Sport or ESP Off mode that I can find. <laughs> and when you nail it mid-corner, it just plows straight because the front wheels are spinning. Uh, this I noticed with Polestar as well is because the motors are equal output, they actually spin them up seemingly at the same amount of power each, which I think is a little bit of not a great strategy. What I would like to see is for them to power the rear motor. So for example here. Yeah, maybe it does power the rear motor harder and then blend in the front so car feels pretty soft I have to say but it's nice like um, it's not beating you up every day and certainly you could hustle it around a back road for sure but there's no one behind us here so let's try an emergency stop and feel how the brakes feel three two one amazing braking performance by the way really strong brakes and you know it's brake by wire so you get this very odd clicking sound through the brake pedal like all brake by wires do but you can still feel a little bit of the ABS that's a great brake pedal wow ever if whoever decides to go with a blended braking system if you're designing a car drive one of these because man does this thing just drive like there's no one behind us again I just want to do one more hard stop so we'll accelerate up and full brakes <laughs> it yanked the seatbelt away from me and it put the hazards on and I still can't breathe. There we go. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, great brakes. Really, really is good, good braking system. Let's try some acceleration too, I guess. We'll just come to a stop here really quick and floor it. Launches hard. Things are flying. Full power at 60 kilometers an hour and that was way north of 100 nice strong power i mean you really don't need any more it's not kick you in the face hard but it's it gets it pretty good so now we'll slow down here one pedal drive bringing us down nice bump and we're out of the 50k zone full power yeah feeds in nice i like it i actually think this gives a better power curve than the Polestar. I don't know if it's any different, but something about this car feels just like a little bit more refined than the last one I drove here. Wow, this is really, really driving nice, and it's beautiful here along the water. I wouldn't call this a dynamic loop, but I would say it's beautiful. And you can just go driver assistance anywhere you want, of course. So yeah, we'll cruise around for a little bit more, but braking and acceleration feel awesome. And overall, I think the car's calibrated really well. It is odd that you can't turn off stability control, or maybe you can, but I can't find the thing. There is an off-road mode functionality, but it won't let me put it on, maybe because I'm going too fast. Let's try slowing down. Yep, so I think under 30 kilometers per hour. Now it's off-road mode, you get hill descent control, it's shut off regen, still gives you full power. Yeah, and it, as soon as you go over 35 or 40 kilometers per hour, it shuts off off-road mode. So maybe that's your like snow mode, for example. And yeah, overall, man, this thing is great. I'm gonna put the steering back to comfort though, because it's a Volvo and should be light. I'm liking it. I am liking it. All these little updates, you can tell they're optimizing this chassis well, and I guess the charging, speaking with the guys, should be uh, pretty good as well. So 63% state of charge. I've spent some time with the car now, and really there's very little annoyance popping up. I would say uh, the seats are very comfortable. I'd have no issue with them whatsoever. I think the steering wheel not coming farther out is really a, 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 an issue for me. But other than that, like... What's not to like here? Car drives great. It's a little soft in the corners for performancey stuff. Maybe we'll be able to hit a couple more twisties before the end of this review, but like, yeah, just a little soft, but that's okay. Man, it's beautiful around here. There's like a mansion over there. We got farms over here, a river here. This is crazy. What an amazing place. Let's continue on. And well, there you have it. Unfortunately, no great twisty roads around here. I went in search, but there are a lot of Dodge Ram pickup trucks. Here's like the fourth one I've seen today, which is like a thing in Europe. That's pretty funny. Um, yeah, so gotta say overall C40 recharge pretty much does the same thing as XC40 recharge. 
just with a bit of styling difference. I really love this Fjord blue. I love the blue accents on the inside. I love the Google infotainment. Uh, the new shifter is cool too. I like the uh, drivetrain strategy of this one pedal approach uh, here, just inching forward, but there it grabs a little bit too strong. So you, it's a little bit hard to modulate when you start coming, see it's a little grabby, but um, yeah, the, these little things can be tuned through software. I think really the uh, the hardware package here is awesome. The uh, the car drives so well, so comfortable. It's a happy place to be. It really is. It's a pleasant car. It's it's sort of like uh, you know ID4 is pleasant and cheerful and not that expensive and doesn't give off a good vibe. This is like if you're a little bit more serious than ID4. It's more of a luxurious car, of course, but it's a very Swedish luxury. It's not like over uh, demanding. So I have to say I'm impressed. I enjoyed it. Love the uh, seating position. I love everything. I'm used to my seat being a little bit higher now. It's uh, almost nothing to dislike. I mean, it's just a little bit expensive, of course, but that's what you get when you get a premium car. And, uh, you know, the range situation is not that amazing. Uh, for EPA, is going to be my guess. Again, low to mid 200s, but uh, especially with a 75 kilowatt hour usable battery pack. So that means efficiency is not great, but I think they might be fine tuning this stuff through software. We'll have to get it in and do a range test with it because that's the only way we truly know. The EPA, um, you know, is a little bit different if you run on two cycle or five cycle. So we got to get this back in the US to our 70 mile per hour highway range test. But again, most people, this has more than enough range for daily driving and it drives really well for daily stuff. I, I really like it a lot, but I think I would personally go for XC40 over C40 because I like the boxy one. Anyway, thanks so much for watching another out of spec reviews video. Hope you enjoyed joining me for my first drive experience in the C40 recharge. If you're interested in more, keep an eye on out of spec or I'm sorry, keep an eye on inside EVs where I'll be taking you on a full tour as well as sort of a review with my thoughts telling you how I feel. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.